Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Ann paid the cashier $5.65 with 25 coins of nickels and quarters. How many of each type of coin did she give the cashier? All right, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's just take one more look at the question. So Anne paid the cashier $5.65. So we're dealing with dollars, we're dealing with uh, the US currency system just in case uh, you know, you're not familiar with it. And I will explain what a nickel and a quarter is here. But the important point here is that she used 25 coins to pay, right? So she paid the cashier $5.65 with 25 coins of nickels and quarters. So the question is, how many of each type, i.e. how many nickels and uh, quarters did she give the cashier? All right, so that is the question. Now let's take a look at the answers. The correct answer is three nickels and 22 quarters. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is fantastic. We have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic math word prom, word problems, excuse me, that involve money. Now, probably a lot of your friends and family won't be too impressed with that information, but some of you might uh, kind of, uh, you know, some of your friends and family might be like, wow, the next time I need financial advice, maybe I'll come to you. Now, one thing I didn't say here is that uh, I didn't indicate that this is an algebra word problem. I didn't say solve the algebra word problem. I said solve the math word problem because if I said this is an algebra word problem, a lot of you would have been like, what are you talking about, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man? I don't like algebra. I don't do algebra. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave your video. And, uh, you know, I don't want you to be afraid of algebra. Algebra is a tool. It just makes things so much better. Think of it as a math uh, screwdriver, a math hammer. It's a tool. Now, a lot of you could have solved this or may have solved this using another technique or just trial and error or common sense, and that is fantastic. But again, what we want to do here is practice using algebra. So if you're afraid of algebra, well, hopefully this video will have you looking like this person in uh, just a few minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So first things first, first we are dealing with a math word problem. And uh, you always want to use the rule of three. This is my rule, but pretty much all teachers have some version of it. And that is read the problem at least a few times. I like to use three times. It seems to work out pretty well. So read a problem three times before you start doing anything. Okay, Because if you just read the problem once, oftentimes uh, people don't understand enough about, about the problem. They just assume. They're like, oh, yes, I got it. And they'll just start doing stuff. And they'll, they'll be like, wait a minute, I'm doing this wrong. They'll go back and read the problem, and then they'll go in this direction. Okay, So to avoid that, uh, if you read the problem over and over again, it just gives your brain a, t a time to kick in and for you to really reflect and think about, all right, what do I need to do here to solve this problem? But you can't solve any problem unless you understand the aspects of this problem. And again, here we're dealing with dollars and nickels and quarters. So if you're not familiar with the U.S. currency system, you're going to be confused uh, a bit. But uh, we'll go ahead and review what a nickel is, what a quarter is. So you got to have an understanding of dollar bills or bills and coins in order to do this problem. And then, of course, we need a strategy to figure this thing out, which I'll get into in just one second. But let's go ahead and quickly review what a nickel and a quarter is. Okay, so uh, before I even do this, first of all, in the U.S. currency system, now I'm, I'm kind of uh, reviewing this. For a lot of you are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I already know this stuff. Well, let's just assume that somebody from another country is not familiar with the U.S. currency system. 
So we have in uh, the US system, like let's say a $1 bill, right? It's a piece of paper. It is a quote unquote bill. And we have $5 bills, $20 bills, et cetera, et cetera. But if you wanted to buy something less than $1, well, it comes in pretty handy to have some change, i.e. some coins hanging around, these round things that we carry in our pocket. So we have uh, nickels, quarters, and dimes, and pennies. So we're talking specifically here about nickels and quarters. All right, so let's review what a nickel is. Okay, so a nickel is a round little coin, and it's worth five cents, okay? It's worth five out of 100. So it's worth, okay, a one dollar $1 bill is worth 100 pennies, okay? So this is a different uh, kind of deal. So when you look at the value of a dollar, well, a nickel is worth five uh, pennies, okay, or five one hundredths of a dollar, all right? Now, because we're uh, uh, talking about dollar amounts in this problem, we want to kind of relate our coin amounts or the values of our coins in terms of a dollar. So a nickel is worth five one hundredths or 0 0.05 or five hundredths of a dollar. Okay. All right. Let's talk about a quarter. A quarter is worth more than a nickel. It's one fourth of a dollar. Okay. So again, uh, that's 100 pennies, so 25 pennies over 100 pennies, so it's worth a quarter of a dollar, and we can uh, represent that as 0.25 of a dollar. That is the value of a, a quarter and the value of a nickel. Okay, so now that we understand uh, some basic things about the U.S. currency system, then we can get back to this problem and think about how to solve it. All right, so as I indicated, I am going to be using algebra. It just makes things so much easier. So I'm going to be using a variable to represent an unknown value. Now, the question here is how many uh, coins or what type of coins did Ann pay with? So she paid with uh, nickels and quarters. We want to know the amount of each type, right? So she paid with a certain amount of nickels and a certain amount of quarters that made up this $5.65. So I'm going to let a uh, this variable X represent the number of nickels, okay? that Ann paid uh, with. And if she paid with X amount of nickels, okay, how many quarters did she pay uh, with? Well, if there's 25 coins uh, total, okay, we had, so here's the total amount of coins, and if she used uh, uh, X nickels, well, the difference there is gonna be how many quarters uh, she used. So for example, if she used 10 nickels, well, how many quarters did she use? Well, if there's 25 total, it would be 25 minus 10, right, or 15. Okay, so that's where this expression comes into. All right, now that we know or we have some sort of model that represents the number of nickels and the number of quarters that Ann uh, used, then we have to uh, build an equation. It does us no good to have some variables here unless we can solve for these variables. And you can't solve for variables in algebra unless you build an equation. So we're going to have to use the rest of the information in the problem to build an equation. And this part of the problem is going to come in pretty handy. So and pay the cashier a total of $5.65. Okay. So we're going to use that total amount. We know how many nickels uh, that she used. We know how many quarters uh, that she used. And we also know the value of uh, these respective coins, nickels and quarters, and we have the total amount. So we have enough information to build ourselves a lovely equation, and here it is. Okay, so how much money uh, in terms of the nickels, okay, did Ann uh, give the cashier? Well, if she had X nickels, okay, and each nickel is worth 0.05 of a dollar. Well, 0.05 times that many nickels is how much money in nickels she gave uh, the cashier. Now, how much was the quarters, right? Well, she used this many quarters, 25 minus X quarters, and each quarter is worth 0.25 of a dollar. So this is the total amount in quarters, right? So this is the total value. So if we add these up, the nickels and the quarters, well, that is the total amount that she paid the cashier, which of course is $5.65. So now we get to solve this lovely equation right here. All right, so again, multiple steps to solve this problem. So we have x times 0.05 plus 25 minus x times 
is equal to 5.65. You certainly want to use a calculator to help you out to solve this equation and hopefully you know how to do that. So let's go ahead and get into how to solve this and let's take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help. And a matter of fact, I'm posting this uh, video in the beginning of 2024, January uh, 2024. I think January 9th, actually, this video will go up. Now, it's the beginning of a new year, so it's not too late for me to say Happy New Year. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully you're in the habit of setting new goals and things that you want to accomplish this year. For me, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to increase the amount of YouTube videos I made. I think I made around 730 YouTube videos in 2023. I want to increase that to a nice round number to a thousand videos. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to have to do it. Uh, I'm going to have to take this goal and I have to break it up into, you know, components, right? How many do I have to do per month? How many do I have to do per day, et cetera, et cetera. So I say all of this to say this, if you have a goal of improving in math, well, you have to do the same thing. You need to break up your big goal into its component parts, all right? And, you know, if you are, again, trying to learn math, what you need to do is figure out where your starting point is at. A lot of you are like, hey, I want to learn calculus. Well, that's great, uh, but you got to make sure that you have these other parts taken care of, like algebra, geometry, pre-calculus, et cetera, et cetera. So if you need help in mathematics, I want to invite you to check out my full uh, course uh, instruction, my full courses. This is really my best work. Uh, you can find a link to those in the description of this video, and they're all different levels you know, from basic math to more advanced math. But as far as this video goes, I need your support to kind of grow my channel and help people just like you. So the best way to do that is just to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. Thanks so much for giving me a little bit of time to tell you why I do what I, you know, why I do what I do. Okay. And now let's get back to solving this equation. All right. Now, some of you could have just said, all right, I'm going to uh, use the decimals here and take 0 0.05 times x. So you got 0.05x plus 0.25. And you just you know, use your calculator to do this using the decimals. That's perfectly fine. But one thing you could do, and I'm actually going to do it here, is I could say, you know what? I got all these decimals. I just want to kind of get rid of these decimals here. Uh, so I have 0 0.05. All right, I know that's 5 one hundredths here. This is... Uh, uh, 0 0.25, you know, that's 0 0.25, uh, you know, over 100. So if I multiply and I got 5.65, if I multiply this entire thing by 100, that's going to get rid of these decimals here, okay? So remember, you can do anything you want in algebra to an equation as long as you do it equally to all sides. So I'm going to multiply each term of this equation by y100 just to get rid of the decimals. You don't have to do this. You can work at decimals and still get the same answer, but I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so now this comes from the experience as well. So don't feel bad if you didn't see, you know, an opportunity to do this. So 100 times uh, 0 0.05 is going to be 5. So this becomes 5x. 100 times 0.25 uh, times, of course, 25 minus x, but this is going to be 100 times 0.25 is 25 times 25 minus x, and then 100 times 5.65 is 565. Okay, so I'd much rather work, you know, uh, solving this equation right here than dealing with these decimals. Okay, so now let's go ahead and, and uh, focus on solving this. So first things first, first you have to use the distributor property right here. So 25 times 25 is 625, so I have 5x plus 625. 25 minus x is 25x, and then of course I have my 565 here. So now I'm going to combine like terms, 5x and negative 25x gives me a negative 20x. And actually, I forgot to put my little 625 right here. Okay, so I caught that error. See that, uh, you know, even I make mistakes, but as long as you catch them, that's what's important. All right, so we have 625 plus negative 20x is equal to 565. So now I need to do what? I need to subtract this 625 from both sides of the equation. And when I do that, I have uh, 565 minus 625 that gives me a negative 60. All right, so now I have this equation, negative 20x is equal to negative 60. And of course, to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 20. 
So negative 60 divided by negative 20 is a positive 3. So x is equal to 3. Now, what a lot of students do is they'll be like, yes, yes, I'm so happy. I am a genius. I solved this problem. And then they'll just like, you know, walk away from the problem. Okay, I've seen this uh, through the years, and then when I have to, you know, give them like a, you know, uh, an A minus or something like that, then that's when the, you know, the sad face and the tears start coming down. They're like, "What are you talking about? Well, you didn't answer the question. All right, you did all this lovely work, but you didn't answer the question. So we have to take the value here, x equals x is equal to three, and figure out, all right, what is the answer to the question? The question was, how many nickels and how many quarters did Ann use to pay the cashier? So remember, we let x equal the number of nickels. So if x is equal to the number of nickels and x is equal to 3, well, the number of nickels she used was 3. And 25 minus x was the number of quarters. So 25 minus x, and of course, x is 3. So that's 25 minus 3, which, of course, is 22. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this uh, problem. If you want to improve in algebra or algebra uh, word problems, you know, you got to really first have these skills down, right? Because you're going to be running into equations here. Again, check out all my main courses in the description of this video. But I also have a ton of additional word problems on my YouTube channel that you can practice with. Because if you don't practice solving problems, you're not going to get better. You simply can't learn math by, you know, doing a few problems here and a few problems there. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.